Welcome to this council meeting of Monday, May 25th, and um, I will uh, call for a moment of silence, please. Thank you. Scugog is situated on treaty land that is steeped in rich indigenous history. Today, we acknowledge that we are gathering on the traditional territories of the Mississaugas of Scugog Island First Nation. We recognize and deeply appreciate the historic indigenous connection to this land and recognize the contributions First Nations, Métis and Inuit peoples have made, both in shaping and strengthening this community in particular, our province and country as a whole. We're grateful for the opportunity to meet here and we thank all the generations of people who have taken care of this land for thousands of years. Uh, tonight, uh, for members of council, members of staff and members of the public, we are uh, starting a new system uh, for agendas and uh, that is in software that we are experiencing tonight for the first time. So um, I'm going to be uh, taking things just a little bit slower so that it will allow our clerk JP to adjust to the new system. And um, I would ask that everybody have patience with me, with JP and with each other. So thank you very much. Um, I will ask if there is any disclosure of pecuniary interest and in the nature thereof. Hearing none. Um, Mr. Clerk, you have uh, something that you would like to say? Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor, and uh, through you to Council. So as we do with our electronic meetings, I'd just like to start with a roll call, if I could, please. Uh, Councillor Watton, are you um, here tonight? Councillor Sorry, Watton, present. present. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Councillor McDougall. Present. Thank you. And Councillor Guido? Present. Thank you. And Councillor Ross? Present. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Kieserbrink? Present. Uh, Councillor Brown? Present. Thank you very much. Uh, Madam Mayor, I can confirm that we do have a uh, quorum for this meeting. Uh, again, as I do with all meetings, I'd like to ask everyone to please mute your mic while not talking. This will avoid any background noise that you may occur where you are and will avoid any echo in the audio. Please use headphones uh, if they're available to you. If you'd like to speak, please post a message in the chat. This is for members of council. Uh, the mayor will then call upon you when it's your turn to speak. Uh, if you happen to leave your computer for any reason, please let the mayor uh, know so that quorum can continue to be met. Uh, when uh, moving or seconding a motion, please unmute your mic and announce your name. Uh, this meeting is being recorded and live streamed to the Township's YouTube channel. Uh, as the Mayor had already mentioned, we will be using the electronic voting process for the first time during tonight's meeting. At the appropriate times, I will announce that the voting is open and Council members will be asked to make a selection. Once everyone has voted, I will announce that the voting is closed. If for any reason a council member is unable to vote, please announce your vote verbally and say in favour or against. Uh, and finally, if the electronic voting system stops working for any reason, we will revert back to the mayor asking each council member for their vote. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. Actually, I just announced uh, members of staff that are in attendance uh, at the meeting tonight also. Uh, so going down the list, I have uh, CEO and librarian uh, Amy Coglin. I have uh, Director of Public Works, Parks and Recreation, Carol Coleman. I have Director of Finance and Treasurer, Diane Valentin. Uh, I have Director of Development Services, Kevin Heritage, Manager of Communications and Strategic Initiatives, Laurie Bowers. Uh, Megan Michelle, who's our Public Works uh, Associate, Parks Public Works Associate. Uh, Fire Chief, Mark Burney. Uh, Chief Administrative Officer, Paula Law. And Manager of Recreation uh, and Culture, Shauna Cornish. Uh, that concludes my opening statements. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Um, prior to uh, this meeting, we had a meeting in closed session to approve uh, minutes from the May 14th and May 19th meetings. 
Those meetings uh, were held to discuss personal matters about an about an identifiable individual, including municipal employees, pursuant to Section 239, bracket 2, bracket B of the Municipal Act 2001, and B, to discuss labor relations or employee negotiations pursuant to Section 239, bracket 2, bracket D of the Municipal Act 2001, and C, to provide council with eScribe meeting management training, which is the um, software we're using tonight, pursuant to Section 239, bracket 3.1 of the Municipal Act 2001. Uh, announcements from council and staff. I'd like to start out, um, please, by saying um, that uh, throughout the last 11 weeks, we've followed the orders from the province and the recommendations from health officials as we navigate COVID-19. Last Tuesday, the province entered phase one of reopening and lifted the closure orders to allow a reopening of outdoor recreational amenities like picnic areas, benches, and recreation areas like the dog park and skate parks. We acknowledge that healthy people are in need and entitled to enjoy recreational and leisure outings for many reasons, including mental health benefits. The park green spaces and picnic areas were opened for use with strict stipulation that physical distance, distancing must be maintained. Thank you to our parks and recreation staff for placing new signage around town explaining the rules of use for setting up only a limited number of picnic tables and arranging alternative washrooms appropriately spaced. The areas along Water Street, Queen Street and other recreation spaces in Scugog were active, yes. But I was happy to learn and you will hear an update this evening that people though in the park area were respecting the physical distancing and respecting the orders. The areas were monitored by our bylaw officers, Scugog staff, as well as the Durham Regional Police Service had an increased presence. We are all working together and I was very proud of Scugog over the weekend in comparison to larger communities like Toronto, which encountered some disrespectful behavior. People here were maintaining their distance and using the amenities in the proper way. Though we've heard some negativity, we have also received positive inquiries and feedback too, thanking us for allowing access to enjoy the outdoors. If you are a Scugog resident living in Nestleton, Blackstock, or on the west side of Scugog and Greenbank, Seagrave, you already need to drive into town for groceries and use of waterfront recreational amenities. There's nothing wrong with people doing that if they are healthy and continue to follow the distance separation orders. Scugog businesses need your dollars more than ever. It is not only local residents that keep the local economy going. We ask that everyone work within the rules and regulations that are in place. Respect the orders, each other, and continue to do your part. Stay home if unwell, wash and sanitize your hands often, and wear a mask in public if physical distancing is a challenge. Thank you. And are there any other announcements from uh, Council? Anybody? Hi, Madam Mayor. I have one. Sorry, Councillor McDougall. Yes. Um, just a, an announcement to everybody in the community to uh, keep in mind, uh, farm, farmers need your support this year uh, more than ever. Um, the crops are coming up. The asparagus is wonderful right now. If you haven't tried uh, community supported agriculture, a CSA program, you might want to consider that. I know uh, Forsyth Farms and Willow Tree, I think Lobax at Hinterland also have a program and they will provide you with uh, whatever is available fresh weekly on a weekly basis. They're amazing programs. Um, that's all I want to say at this point in time. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Okay. Thank you, Councillor McDougall. Are there any other announcements? Use the chat if you need. I'm not seeing any. So, um, Marcio uh, Paula Lord, you have an announcement. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd, I'd like to provide uh, an update concerning the state of the COVID-19 emergency. Firstly, um, the provincial declaration of emergency was once again extended from May the 12th to June the 2nd, and all related emergency orders enacted by the province were also extended from May the 19th to May the 29th. This includes 
the prohibition of public events and the gathering of more than five people, and also the closure of places of non-essential businesses. And we would expect a further extension uh, in the future. There were also changes made by the province to the order respecting the closure of outdoor recreation amenities. And you touched on these, Madam Mayor. The outdoor recreation amenities that are now reopened by the province include the off-leash dog park, parks, benches, picnic shelters located in our parks or recreation areas, the pier, skate parks, and the uh, disc golf course. Um, and I just remind all residents who participate in the use of those activities to please maintain two meters for physical distance. Um, families are welcome to use the park green space to kick a ball or throw a frisbee, but the playground equipment does remain closed and team, stores, team sport use of the playing fields is not permitted. Um, there are There is a report and presentation from staff providing uh, further details concerning the township's COVID-19 recovery and reopening of municipal facilities and programs plans. So I'll leave that uh, for discussion when that presentation is made. We also have three other reports on the agenda that are COVID-19 related. The special events update, the virtual Canada Day celebrations update, and uh, a review of our revenue and expenditures uh, over this uh, COVID emergency time. And um, before we move forward, Madam Mayor, I do know that uh, Kevin Heritage, our Director of Development Services, uh, would like to provide an update concerning COVID-19 bylaw related activity. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Mr. CAO. Uh, Director Heritage, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, bylaw staff are now covering seven days a week in order to patrol in conjunction with Durham Regional Police, the active areas in the township. Several of these areas include Palmer Park, the municipal boat launches in Port Perry and Caesarea, skate parks, and the well-used parking lots along Highway 7A. In addition to these patrols, staff continue to respond to individual complaints throughout the township. Staff are pleased to advise Council that the people in Palmer Park and the picnic shelter over the past weekend were respectful of physical distancing and where congregated were observed to be in groups of five or less in compliance with the provincial emergency orders. Further, the Durham Regional Police advised that during their patrols, they observed no major issues. And Madam Mayor, as a final note, although there were or was substantial traffic in the parking lots along Highway 7A, the patrons were generally found to be in compliance with social distancing and in groups of no, no more than five people. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, that is good news. Are there any other staff uh, members that would uh, have an announcement to make? Yes, Madam Mayor, it's uh, oh. Chief Bernie. Oh. Go ahead, Chief. Thank you and uh, good evening, Council. Uh, I'd like to uh, bring to your attention that uh, beginning May 24th, from running through to May 30th, 2020, is National Paramedic Week. Uh, paramedics play an integral role on the front lines of healthcare, as you all are aware. These proud professionals are often our first contact when we require emergency pre-hospital care. And I'd, I'd ask all of you that if you have the opportunity to join me in giving these partners and community safety a big thumbs up. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Absolutely. I think every one of us has got our thumbs up right now. I'm sure of it. So thank you very much for your announcement. Are there any other um, members of staff that have an announcement? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, some, some good news. Uh, we have the next on the agenda is uh, presentations and I will ask uh, Ms. Cornish, our Manager of Recreation and Culture, to uh, talk about recovery and reopening of municipal facilities and programs plan and that is item number 9.2.1 and with your indulgence after the report by Ms. Cornish, we will take that report forward. Ms. Cornish? If you're muted, <laughs> Thank you, Madam Mayor. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, good Go evening, ahead. Mayor. 
Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and members of Council. Tonight I will be presenting the Township's Recovery and Reopening Plan for Municipal Facilities, Parks and Recreation Programs. This presentation will include an overview of the Provincial Declaration of Emergency and current provincial orders, a review of the varied resources used to develop the plan, a review of the many recreational amenities that have reopened in the past two weeks within the township, an overview of the action items required for the future reopening of facilities, parks, recreation programs to ensure the public and safety staff safety, and finally, a summary of the financial implications of the purchases required to maintain physical distancing and ensure the health and safety of the public and staff at the time that the facilities reopen to the public. As a reminder, on March 17, 2020, the province issued Order in Council 18-2020, Declaration of Emergency under the Emergency Management and Civil Protection Act. This declaration has now been extended to June 2nd, 2020. Based on the declared emergency, a number of order and councils were subsequently issued and included the closure of establishments, including all facilities providing indoor recreational programs with a current expiry date of May 29th. An order to prohibit public gatherings of more than five people with a current expiry date of May 29th. On May 19th, the order of March 30th for the closure of outdoor recreational amenities was amended to allow facilities to reopen with the same current expiry date of May 29th. And lastly, the order for the closure of places of non-essential businesses was amended on May 14th to allow curbside pickup for libraries. During the development of the plan, several resources were used to help create the recovery and reopening plan. The listed resources include the framework for reopening our province provided by the province of Ontario, which lays out Ontario's approach to restarting the economy and includes guiding principles and public health recommendations to gradually reopen services and public spaces. Staff also incorporated guidelines suggested by the Durham Region and Ontario Public Health Departments while developing the plan. There are many provincial associations such as Ontario Parks, Parks and Recreation, ORFA, and the Institute of Museum and Library Services that have prepared guidelines to help municipalities to reopen facilities and parks. These guidelines assisted in the production of the action items listed in the plan. During the last two months, staff have been participating in various virtual meetings with their counterparts within the region. These interactions have been important tools to assist with planning for the reopening phase. Above all, during the development of this plan, it's the township's priority to ensure the health and safety of the public visiting our facilities, parks, and participating in our recreational programming, and of our staff who provide essential services to the public. As members of Council are acutely aware, the order and revocation of orders occurs rapidly. The following are the recreational amenities that have been reopened due to the order of some outdoor recreational amenities being revoked on May 19th. Township staff have been busy removing barricades and altering signage at the following amenities to align with the provincial orders. At the boat launches, docks were installed on May 15th at the Port Perry boat launch and barricades removed at both launches on Saturday, May 16th at the start of the long weekend. Discussions with the leaser of the Port Perry Marina indicated that the marina would be open to the public on Friday, May, May 22nd. The caution tape and barricades were removed at the off-leash dog park, benches, disc golf course, and skate parks last week. Half the normal amount of picnic tables, which is five, have been placed at the picnic shelter and the same amount of tables throughout Palmer and Bird's Eye Park as in the past. Barricades and caution tapes, tape at the basketball courts, baseball diamonds, and soccer fields have been removed. Signage has been placed to remind the public that these areas are open for play for individuals within a household and that team play is prohibited at this time. The amended provincial order permits the reopening of tennis courts. Tennis courts in Greenbank are managed by the park board. 
the tennis courts in Seagrave are managed by the township, and the courts in Port Perry are managed by the Port Perry Tennis Club. The Port Perry Tennis Club has advised the township that based on recommendations by the Ontario Tennis Association, many of their normal programs would be cancelled or restricted. At this time, the club does not plan on, op on operating until the provincial directive on physical distancing is removed. Therefore, at this time, the Port Perry tennis courts will remain closed for the season, as the township does not own the nets or equipment required for the courts and is not in a position to enforce the physical distancing requirements at the more well-used courts. However, the Green Bank Park Board has expressed interest to open their courts and the Seagrave courts have been opened for use by the public. Signage reminding the public to maintain physical distancing has been placed. Single play would only be permitted on the open courts to ensure proper physical distancing. Signage is a key component with the reopening of recreational amenities. The large curb signs have been redesigned to provide notice that the areas are now open for use with several reminders, such as to practice physical distancing, wash hands, and or sanitize hands frequently, and that equipment surfaces are not sanitized. Since there have been many recreational amenities reopened to the public, providing washroom facilities became a priority, and a decision to keep the public washrooms closed was made due to the building size of the washroom. It would be difficult to monitor the physical separation requirements in both the Joe Fowler and the Port Perry Marina washrooms. Therefore, portable toilets were placed instead. Staff proceeded with the rental of 13 portable toilet units, an overall increase of three from the operating budget, as three are not required at this time at the Carol and Best Diamond. A concern while deciding to place the units was how often they would be required to be disinfected. In consultation with the Region of Durham Health Department, Portable toilets with hand sanitizers available inside the units are not a high risk amenity for transmission. However, the door handles are. Therefore, the cleaning schedule of the units along the waterfront is Tuesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, with staff providing additional disinfecting of the door handles of the units twice a day. When the provincial directive is removed regarding physical separation, staff will be prepared to begin to clean the facilities. A standard operating procedure has been developed to guide staff on what disinfectant to use and what PPE will be provided for use. As we are aware, this is an evolving situation and the use of the portable toilets versus the public washroom opening will be monitored weekly and based on observations, adjustments can be made if necessary. Signage on the portable toilets have been installed that describes the above noted cleaning schedule and to use at their own risk. When, outdoor, when further outdoor recreation amenities can be opened, the caution tape on the outdoor fitness equipment and playground structures will be removed. A hand sanitizer unit will be placed on the bird's eye pool building for users of the outdoor fitness equipment to access. Signage on the playground structures will stay in place that advise the public that the playground structures are not sanitized. The splash pad can be reopened once the province order has been revoked. The capital item to repair the concrete has been delayed until the fall as the contractor would need months notice to complete the repairs. The splash pad can run in its current state for the 2020 season. Maintenance work has commenced on bird's eye pool that includes draining the pool, refilling with water to below the skimmer and chlorinating the pool. This work is required to maintain the integrity of the concrete pool due to its location near the lake. Staff would require three weeks notice to have the pool ready for public use. Once the pool is open, there will be several rules in place to address physical distancing taken from the Life Saving Society, and they include reducing the bather load, adjusting lessons by using lane lines to create a barrier to promote distancing, and using a reservation system for lane swim. Additional signage will be required in the change rooms as they only have one access point. Following the province's framework for reopening our province, Summer camps may be allowed to run in stage two of the reopening when the province allows larger public gatherings and reopens the indoor recreational facilities. To date, all online registrations have been closed for the current camps offered. The traditional camps that were advertised in the leisure guide will not be able to be offered in the conventional sense with eight different camps and 200 campers at the Scugog Community Recreation Center per week. 
The Premier has indicated that there will be strict guidelines in place for day camps to proceed. The Township will follow the provincial guidelines when they are made available. Some of the expected modifications are expected to include limiting the number of campers per facility. For example, we would offer a camp for younger aged campers with a maximum of 16 children divided into two pods. Each pod would have their own supplies and equipment that would not be shared, therefore limiting the touch points for all the children. Camp activities would be modified to increase physical distancing. Instead of playing games of tag, there'd be more crafts and individual play, such as riding bikes and scooters. We would keep pods centralized to their own space in the facility, one pod on half of pad one and the other on the second half of pad one. This spacing would occur for the other aged camps offered on pad two and in the community hall. A second location for outdoor camp would be at the Scugog Shores Museum Village. Drop off and pick up procedures would be modified for campers to be dropped off in the parking lot so parents are not accessing the building to maximize the distance separation in the parking lot instead of the lobby of the arena. Temperature checks will be taken of all campers and staff each day with a rejection for a temperature above 37.8 degrees Celsius as suggested by Ontario Public Health. Staffing requirements would be modified based on the restricted number of campers in the modified camps. The camp counselors would require time to tr be trained and modify their camp activities. The township would require three weeks to prepare the modified camps and to allow time for campers to be registered. Staff will be preparing an outbreak plan in the case where there is a positive case of COVID in our camp. The draft plan will be submitted to the emergency control group for their approval. Once the provincial order is revised to allow the reopening of indoor recreation facilities and allow public gatherings of greater than 50 people, the township would be in a position to open the Scugog Shores Museum Village. To date, the buildings have been cleaned by park staff and gardens are planned to be planted later this month. Once open to the public, staff will limit the number of visitors to the property to 50 and only allow five people per building. The Scugog Shores Museum Village's events, including the Canoe the Nongquan, Speaker Series, Dog Days, and Murder Night event have been cancelled for the 2020 season. Upon the decision to reopen the village, the museum curator will return and the hiring of summer students will commence. During the closure of the facilities, staff have been preparing new procedures and guidelines for the reopening of facilities. These guidelines will need to be adjusted based on new information being received by the public health departments. An example of a new procedure is the standard operating procedure on cleaning public washrooms and a meeting with ICE users has been scheduled for this week to start discussions surrounding operational issues such as dressing room allotment. Protective screens will be installed this week at all customer service points within the township, including the Scugog Community Recreation Centre, Blackstock Complex, Municipal Office, Fire Hall, Library, and Bird's Eye Pool. Hand sanitizers and signage, including floor markings to remind the public of physical distancing requirements will be installed at the public facilities. Staff are proposing to restrict the number of people allowed in the building at one time to align with the provincial orders. The maximum number of public skaters will decrease from 160 to 50 and will be monitored by the reception staff and skate patrollers. All sport organizations will be required to submit the return to play guidelines. Many provincial and federal sporting organizations have developed their return to play guidelines. These will be submitted to staff for review and approval before ice bookings are taken. The decision of when to start the refrigeration plant will depend on provincial orders. The region of Durham Health Department has circulated recommendations for the return to the office to ensure a health and safe work environment last week after the report was printed in the agenda. Additions to the above action items taken from the region's guidelines would be to require staff to engage in self-screening prior to reporting to work, decrease the number of people allowed in the elevator at one time, make available masks for staff to wear at the office, and to log visitors at the reception desk. Virtual meetings with outside agencies will continue when feasible, and the cleaning contractors will be required to enhance the cleaning of the building. Staff are in the process of creating a work from home policy for any township staff whose job duties allow the potential to work from home. 
The same protective screens for customer service points, hand sanitizer dispensers and signage, including floor markings, will be installed at the fire hall prior to reopening. The chief has been in discussions with his municipal counterparts regarding the spacing requirements in the fire trucks and how to best achieve this. Frontline staff will be offered additional PPE to ensure their health and safety. Once the provincial and municipal emergency declarations are canceled, a return to in-person council and committee meetings will proceed. The plan includes allowing up to three council members to participate remotely and to increase distancing for council members by either extending desks or using staff desks. The practice of reducing the number of chairs in the gallery and spreading out the chairs a minimum of two meters apart and to increase the distance between the members of the press will continue. Upon the provincial order revision to allow the reopening of indoor recreation facilities, community halls will be open to the public. Staff will share with the community hall boards new procedures that are being developed to be implemented at the community halls. All renters for facilities and community halls will be required to submit plans regarding how their event will satisfy public health guidelines prior to facility contracts approved. Many of the same action items for the municipal office, SCRC and fire hall will be implemented at the Scugog Memorial Public Library. Ms. Coughlin will now speak to some specific items to the library. Ms. Coughlin. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mayor Drew. Um, as uh, Shauna suggested, some of the similar things will be happening. We are also getting the protective screens installed. And I was in the library today moving the customer service desks into a new configuration to allow for that. And there will be hand sanitizer and signage. Um, we are launching um, a contactless pickup as is now allowed um, with the change to the emergency order. And that will be launching on June the 2nd. Um, we will be bringing staff back into the building on June the 1st and spending that day training them in, in the new procedures um, to ensure that uh, we have no more than five staff in the building at a time and all of the staff will be um, keeping that two meter distance um, and if necessary, when handling materials, they will be um, very careful to use the PPE. We will be um, quarantining all materials returning um, through the Dropbox for 72 hours, as is recommended currently by uh, the Southern Ontario Library Service. And um, we will be using the front foyer um, of the library between the two sliding doors um, for a table for pickup and uh, scheduling people for um, pickup times so that they'll be able to, um, we won't have too many people coming in at the same time. Their items will already be checked out in advance and waiting for them in a bag with their name on it on a table in the front entry. Um, so, uh, when we are looking, we're looking beyond that, as you can see from the plan, um, the library's plan that's included. Um, so we will be, um, when we do reopen the building again, we'll be limiting the number of people in the building. We'll be spacing out things like public computers um, and um, limiting the use for the meeting room and removing chairs. Um, and attempting to continue the things that we've already been doing in terms of our successful online programs. Um, we're also currently investigating self-checkout options for patrons. We even have um, an app that we're looking at that people can use to check out books anywhere in the library using their phone, so they won't necessarily need to um, approach and use a self-checkout kiosk. Um, just as another way to limit the interactions and have as few people as possible touching the books. Is that that is all. Yes, okay, that thank concludes. You. Thank you very much. Um, uh, anything further, um, Ms. Cornish? Just a little bit, Madam Mayor. Okay, go ahead. 
In this new COVID-19 era, the township will need to implement safety measures outlined in the plan that will have financial implications. The protective screens being installed this week is estimated at $10,000, $10,500. The additional portable toilets with additional cleaning is estimated at $1,900 per month. The hand sanitizer dispensers are free of charge through our cleaning supplier. However, the cost of the sanitizer is $160 for six one liter bottles. The total cost for hand sanitizer will be dependent on the use at each facility. The total cost for the additional signage is unknown at this time, as the need and quantity change rapidly with the provincial orders being revoked. However, to date, approximately $4,000 has been spent on signage. Currently, quotes are being sought for the adjustment to the public cubicles and additional PPE for staff. To date, $2,000 has been spent on PPE. Funding for the additional expenses will be funded through the building maintenance operating account lines. Cost savings and offsets in the budget will be found in, the other line, in other line items. All costs are being tracked and staff are hopeful that the provincial and or federal governments will assist with the extra costs related to the COVID-19 pandemic. As previously mentioned, the health and safety of the public and staff is the township's paramount priority during the reopening phases. I would like to stress how this plan can and will be adjusted based on more guidelines and procedures being published by the federal and provincial government and the various associations that assist with the operating of the, facility, of the municipality. Thank you for listening to my presentation this evening. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Cornish. What an incredible report and incredible presentation. Thank you so much. And I understand that uh, uh, developing this um, strategy, this report um, was your initiative and we thank you very much. Um, I know that you um, developed the bones of this and I know that staff has uh, had a lot of input as well. So thank you. Uh, thank you very, very much. This is a very forward thinking document. Uh, it's a living document as I know because um, we never know when these announcements are coming out and what shape they will take, but uh, I think that um, uh, we can adapt quite easily. I think, I uh, believe we were the first uh, in Durham region to develop this type of report, a recovery report. Um, and I know that after you had, you and staff had developed this at um, the health department from the region came out with uh, some guidelines and uh, we seem to be very much in line with those guidelines. So thank you again, and I'll uh, leave the floor open for questions. Use the chat, please, and uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Ross. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, uh, Ms. Cornish, for that report. That was fantastic. Um, I know uh, you've answered one of the questions in the report that wasn't in the uh, in the document provided to council, but um, just to follow up in the financial section of your report, um, the dollar value that you've added for um, hand sanitizer and signage, um, the obviously it's a it's a moving a moving number. Um, will that be continue to be updated as things progress? Ms. Cornish. Uh, through you, Mayor, to the Councillor, yes, there's a tracking, a COVID tracking spreadsheet um, that any purchase related to COVID is tracked. And um, so the spreadsheet is updated and, and we can be providing updates as necessary. Okay, great. Further. And further, if I may, yes. um, Ms. Cornish, um, just in regards to hand sanitizers, it's still... Um, Health Canada and the WHO's recommendation that uh, cleaning hands is the number one way to prevent the spread of um, COVID. Um, we have you've mentioned some spots that will have uh, hand sanitizers. Can you make mention with in regards to the skate park and other parks around the uh, around the township if they will also have uh, remote hand sanitizers available? Ms. Cornish. Through you, Mayor, to the, the councillor, uh, we some skate parks, the Port Perry Skate Park is close to the indoor, uh, the SCRC, which when it is open would have um, access to hand sanitizer and washroom facilities to wash hands. But the outlying parks in Skateboard uh, Park, uh, 
there isn't a plan right now for hand sanitizers at the moment, but as um, we're stressing, this is always evolving and we can take that suggestion back to the emergency con control group. Great. Thank you. I think um, perhaps to the CAO and to the mayor also, I think uh, with that recommendation, I, I know this is off of rec area, but um, Queen Street, Water Street, you know, it, it would be nice to see people pretty much tripping over hand sanitizer stations. There's so <laughs> many of them. So uh, maybe that's something we can look into, especially uh, in relation to this at the rec areas. Thank you. Ms. Cornish, you, uh, there will be some hand sanitizers, extra ones in the park, uh, am I right? Um, the, other than the ones that are in the washrooms, is that correct? Yes, Mayor Drew, the, we have, uh, we're going to install some hand sanitizers on some posts throughout the park, uh, Palmer Park and Birdseye Park. We're awaiting for the actual product to come. We have the units, but the product is of course back ordered and we've been told uh, it's on its way this week. Oh, thank you very much. And I understand a, a lot of the stores, if not all of them that are open, um, have hand sanitizers in there as well. So um, I think we're we're looked after. Um, thank you very much, um, Councillor Ross and Councillor Brown. Yes, thank you. And through you, Madam Mayor, uh, congratulations on a great uh, amount of work that you read beautifully, uh, Ms. <laughs> Cornish. That's, uh, that's a, I know a little bit about reading out loud, and that's a lot of reading, and you did an excellent job, and it was an excellent presentation. I just have one notation on the, I went through my notes in this new e-scribe and uh, came up with a, uh, a mention that I wanted to give to people. Let's see if I can call it up here. I spoke with Jack Doak last week because it was suggested at the BIA meeting that Jack had offered to be part of a washroom solution downtown. We seem to be talking a fair bit about washrooms and especially at this very important time. Uh, he's offered a space behind his new building, the former home hardware, for a shipping container washroom and another at Palmer Park. So uh, it's his offer. Um, I think he would uh, consider some advertising. He would, might like to put on the one in Palmer Park. But anyway, I just wanted to throw it out there because it has been discussed uh, by the BIA and I did get the information from Jack himself. Uh, and uh, so that's for council's consideration either now or in the future, whenever. Thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, we can take that to the um, uh, emergency control group uh, and, and Ms. Cornish will probably bring it forward. So thank you very much. And are there any other questions or comments from uh, councillors? I have come to the end of my list. Seeing none, thank you very, very much, um, Ms. Cornish, uh, for an excellent report and presentation. Um, job well done. Oh, I see uh, Councillor McDougall has something. Sorry, thank you, Madam Mayor. Just trying to get to my keyboard and microphone quickly. Um, thank you for the presentation through you, Madam Mayor, to uh, Ms. Cornish. A uh, couple questions um, with regards to washrooms. Has there been any indications, and I'm not sure if this question is best directed to you, um, but if, it appears to me that the drivers for us to provide public washrooms are not necessarily borne by the municipality itself, but perhaps uh, some of the food providing outlets that are in the municipality providing food, but yet n not providing anywhere to relieve yourself after you purchase that food. Has there been any indication, and, that, and again, I don't know if you're the best one to ask this question to, but from the regional level or province that these restaurants and chains will reopen their facilities such that patrons can use the facilities. Do we have any knowledge of that? Ms. Cornish, I don't know if this is uh, in your line of work, but you can make a stab at it. Through you, Mayor, to, to the councillor, I am unaware right now I'm um, of any provincial or a, pro, a provincial order um, for that. I, I'm maybe maybe somebody else might be able to help. Is there another staff member that could help with that? Uh, I could, maybe, okay. Madam Mayor. Uh, thank yes, you, Mr. Uh, CEO. Yes, thank you. So I think that um, I have to keep in mind, that, of course, that the further uh, opening for restaurants is yet to come and uh, it's probably in the phase two component of the province's plan. So at this time, of course, it's pickup for restaurants and not in, in an inside sit down. So um, the need for the washrooms is alleviated because people are just picking up. So yes, washrooms will not be available to anyone because uh, patrons are not permitted within the 
the buildings. And, and the same applies at this time, of course, for the retail pickups. Um, so um, just wanted to make sure people were clear on that and that um, the township is providing, as you heard from Ms. Cornish, um, numerous wash, uh, portable washrooms uh, at the waterfront that are accessible to the public. And um, depending on what the uh, BIA and the downtown uh, merchants decide in terms of their go forward downtown, they may wish to explore uh, washrooms themselves for their patrons in some form, portable uh, or, or otherwise. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. And no further questions. Um, with your indulgence, uh, Council, we'll move to the report 9.2.1. It's on page 54. Madam Mayor, if we could just get a uh, resolution to um, receive that presentation, please. Okay. Uh, could I have a motion, please, I'll to receive that, it? Madam Mayor? We'll Councillor Watton. Councillor Watton, seconder. Councillor Ross. Councillor Ross, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Clerk, can you open the voting, please? Voting is now open, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Ross, are you having uh, an issue with voting? Uh, unfortunately, I am. It's not popping up on my screen right now. Okay, it looks. Can we like do a verbal? Yeah, it appears to me that you're not logged into the app from my end. Could you just vote verbally for now? Yeah, in favor. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I've. Uh, added Councillor Ross's vote will be in favour and you should be able to see the result now. Uh, carried six to zero. Thank you very much, Mr. Clerk. Uh, now moving to the report on page 54. Uh, could I have a mover very much? Okay, so we'll uh, move to the uh, items to be pulled. Pecuniary interest? No. Yeah, good, good, good point. Voting <laughs> is not <close. laughs> <laughs> Do I click abstain then? No, it's just you don't vote. Okay. Yeah, voting is now closed, Madam Mayor. Okay, it's uh, carried four to nothing, um, and that um, that is because uh, two can't vote. Uh, okay, that is carried. Uh, we will move now to 9.1.8, and that is the Port Perry Business Improvement Area Board Minutes of May the 12th. And Councillor Brown has pulled that. Councillor Brown, you have a question or a comment? Yeah, just a motion, if I may, uh, Madam Mayor. Mm -hmm. Page 37. Um, and this is the BIA minutes of May 12, 2020, Section 10. I move that the minutes of the Port Perry BIA meeting held May 12, 2020 be received and that the 2020 BIA levy be reduced by 25% from 113,833 to 84,374.75. Okay, um, do I have, I have a seconder, please? A seconder, please? Councillor Kiesebrink, I'll second that. Okay, thank you. Questions or comments, or do you have a statement um, to make? Mr. Uh, Councillor Brown, do you have a statement or Not at this comment? juncture, no, no. That's okay. the motion should be, be good enough, thank you. Okay, mm. thank you. Are there any questions or comments to the motion yeah. and to the report? Madam Mayor, it's Councillor Guido. Um, I have questions on the report, but now that Councillor Brown has thrown in a second motion there with the levy because we are uh, contributing members of the levy, I won't be able to vote on that. So, um, uh, Mr. Clerk, I'm not sure if we need to separate the motion so that I can still ask my questions on the minutes. Mr. Clerk? Uh, yeah, you, you've got a motion to receive there. Uh, as long as you don't discuss uh, the uh, levy, should be fine. So we're voting on the, the levy question now. Uh, so, uh, Councillor Guido, um, you you wish to declare an interest a on this? A pecuniary interest, yep, on, okay. on the levy. Okay, that is noted. 
Madam Mayor, you could just hold the vote for that uh, Councillor Brown's motion now to get that out of the way, and Councillor Keys, uh, sorry, Councillor Guido can just not vote and ask her questions after if you would like. Okay. To, are there, to avoid any confusion. Okay. So, are there any questions or comments on the motion uh, about the levy? Uh, Councillor McDougall. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. I have a question, and I believe it would be directed to uh, Director Valentin if she's on the line. Um, yes. What um, what will be the overall effect if we reduce the levy this year going forward to next year's levy? Director Valentin. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, the BAA has to review their budget annually, so I think in our last meeting when these minutes came forward is my understanding that they reviewed the budget and due to the current pandemic and the inability to do some of their um some of their events that they were able to take down uh, the, the budget a little bit they also do have a surplus that they can um, utilize as well so next year they just have to go forward and redo the budget and see where their shortfall is and where they would need to collect the, the levy from the BIA members. Further, Councillor McDougall? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. So just for clarity, uh, Director Valentin, uh, basically next year, this won't affect next year's levy at all. They can look at it from a brand new fresh page sort of view. Is that correct? Through you, Madam Mayor, every year they have to review the budget and the amount that they want. To, they, they look at the whole budget and look at the events that they want to hold and revenues that they may generate, and then any shortfall becomes the levy. So they have to do that on an annual basis. So I don't think that this would impact. Voting is closed, Madam Mayor. Okay, the voting is uh, five to zero, so it's unanimous for those that could vote. And now uh, the motion to receive the, the uh, minutes, uh, was that, was that, I'm sorry, but that was you as well, was it, uh, Councillor Brown? Uh, yes, it, it would be if, in fact, that's open to me. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, that was a part of that motion, Madam Mayor, if I may. Um, okay, so, so Councillor, yeah, so Councillor Guido, you can go ahead and ask her questions now, I would suggest, uh, okay. with, your, with your permission, of course. So it's, uh, it's uh, same mover, same seconder, and uh, Councillor Guido, you have a question. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. I have a few questions from the minutes. Um, in the minutes, and let me just scroll down, uh, it touches on our patio uh, program. Have staff been involved, and I'm sure they have, in planning how we would be able to effectively manage um, having tables on a patio, pedestrian traffic walk um, on the sidewalks, and servers serving the tables. How will this look from a patio perspective this year versus last year? Uh, Mr. CAO, can you take that question or direct it to who can answer, please? Madam Mayor, sure, I'll, um, I'll, I'll start. And I'm not sure if um, Ms. Coleman's group has looked at this in any way. Um, for, firstly, um, as mentioned previously, so the, um, the use of a patio at this time is not per, not permitted by provincial order. So we will, when the province decides to allow seating at restaurants, then we will, we have been told from the province that there will be detailed guidelines on how they are to operate. And then at that time, when those guidelines are produced, we will look at those and, and determine how this, this will work. The, we do have patio applications in the queue, and I think they're ready, if not almost ready, but they're being held in uh, abeyance until such time as the province changed their order. So I think the answer to your question, Councillor Guido, will come uh, once we have better uh, details from the province of how restaurants are going to operate, and then we'll look at that in, in detail and in, in how these patios may operate also. Okay, Councillor Guido. Thank you. If I may, through you, Madam Mayor. Um, further on in the minutes, it indicates that the township is considering waiving the patio fees. And I know there's a notice of motion later on in the agenda, but 
seen as though this was in the minutes and it was taught, I don't know where this, this came from as far as the minutes and who mentioned it in their meeting, but if, have we, if we've already received applications and I'm assuming payment would have been submitted at some point, um, where was the decision process in potentially waiving these fees? Did that come from the BIA or was this a staff suggested um, uh, idea? No, it was not a staff suggested idea. And I was surprised actually to see it in the minutes because um, uh, it was um, a, a conversation um, from one of the uh, people who um, uh, would have a patio, one of the businesses that would have a patio. Um, it was a suggestion and um, that's as far as it got. I guess just word got around so um, that that there was a possibility that um, that the uh, fees would be waived, but um, their staff is not working on it at all. They're only working on the uh, on the patio uh, applications. So staff has not been considering it at all. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Then would it be proper to have this removed from their minutes that the township is considering waiving the fees? I understand that we have a motion later on, but in on May 12th or 14th, whenever this meeting was, that motion wasn't tabled on the council floor. No, it wasn't. So yes, I think it would be, I think it would be wise to remove it from the minutes. Yes. Thank you. And um, further down on page three, I know Councillor Brown um, uh, alluded to it during our presentation from uh, Ms. Cornish. Um, my question is, um, Stuart Bennett asked Lance Brown whether Mr. Doak has discussed the space available for the township to put in public washrooms at the back. Um, I, is there further details that need to be shared with us on this, or is this again a, a, just a conversation that's occurred and is now in, in the minutes? Uh, uh, Councillor Brown? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. And through you to the Councillor, uh, I did. Uh, I was at the meeting, obviously, and Stu mentioned it. So he said uh, he heard that Jack Doak was willing to volunteer um, washroom facilities such as they would be in, uh, in the behind his uh, current building, the new building and also uh, at Palmer Park. So I said I would check on it. So I checked on it and he said he would. And the information I gave you was pretty much precisely what he said. Further, right. Councillor Guido? Uh, no, I, I would assume that that would come back as a council report that, or staff report to council if we were going to have extra bathrooms donated um, or placed on municipal property. Uh, I would I would assume that that's got a, a conversation between Mr. Doak and uh, staff, be and uh, then we can move on from there with the staff recommendation. Agreed. Thank you. Okay. Ma Madam Mayor. Yes. Um, yeah, it's the CAO. I could just add uh, through you to Councillor Guido. So the um, yeah that reference there has been no discussions of earnest in this regard. I have heard. Just by uh, just by way of the grapevine, more than anything, that Mr. Doak is interested in that. It's not something that staff have done any work on or have at this point uh, in mind to bring forward to council. If we have more details, uh, we would look into it, of course, with him. But I think it's very much in its preliminary stage. That's okay. all, Madam Mayor. Okay, thank you. Anything else, uh, Councillor Guido? No, thank you, Madam Mayor. Oh, okay. uh, Councillor Kieserbrink, uh, were you, did you want to make a comment or uh, or not? I see a yes I and a no. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I think I'll wait uh, for the for the motion later. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Uh, any other announcements or any other questions or comments? Uh, seeing none, um, Mr. Clerk, can you open the voting, please? And we will uh, ask for that uh, one sentence to be removed. I've noted that Madam Mayor and that um, resolution to receive was passed in the in the in the last uh, resolution. So you can oh. move on to the next uh, item as you as you wish. OK, thank you, Mr. Clerk. Uh, we move now to 9.1.10. Uh, the Scugog Heritage Advisory Committee and it's on page 48 and Councillor Guido, you have uh, pulled that. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, through you, likely to Director Heritage, 
um, on page, let me just scroll down on page three of three. So the, the last page of this report um, under other matters, section 10 in regards to a business that has um, some outstanding permit applications. Um, Director Heritage, can you please advise, first of all, is the, is the process that the permit needs to be uh, reviewed and, and approved before work is done and if there's an update on the status of both those outstanding matters. Mr. Heritage. Thank you, Madam Mayor to the Councillor. Uh, there is a requirement in the Heritage Conservation District Plan for the submission of a heritage permit for work to be done in this manner and the applicant has agreed to submit a heritage permit for specifically the garage door that's uh, been installed on the east side of the old uh, home hardware store so we anticipate that coming in shortly and also the branching out sign uh, we're working with the applicant right now in terms of finalizing uh, that sign. Further, uh, Councillor Guido? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. So typically in a permit process with the Heritage Cons Conservation District, it goes to committee and then comments are gathered and uh, uh, is it that a recommendation is done through minutes um, that, that they approve the changes and then the applicant would be able to proceed or if there was concerns, they would have to adhere to those concerns in their design or construction. Director Heritage. Through you, Madam Mayor to the Councillor. Uh, requests for heritage permits um, are approved by staff. Staff takes the heritage permit applications through the committee for uh, comment uh, and review and typically the heritage permit applications are submitted before any work is done in this case uh, the heritage permit is coming in after the work was completed Councillor Guido so thank you Madam Mayor I guess my point is the the process has been around for probably quite a while um, are there any repercussions when we don't uh, follow the proper process Director Heritage. Through you, Madam Mayor to the Councillor. That's why we're requesting the applicant to submit a heritage permit. And he has agreed to submit the heritage permit uh, as soon as possible so we can uh, review it and uh, get comments back from the committee. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Any other questions or comments on uh, this item, uh, the Heritage Advisory Committee meetings? Seeing none, um, may I have a motion, please, uh, to approve the um, or to receive for information? Also moved, Madam Mayor, Councillor Watton. Council Councillor Watton, thank you. Seconder? Councillor Ross. Councillor Ross, thank you very much. Any other questions or comments? Madam Seeing Mayor, I have to declare pecuniary interest on this particular. Uh, motion because our business uh, does business with branching out florist. Okay, um, it's duly noted. Um, Mr. Clerk, would you open the voting please? Voting is open, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Keesbring, if you could just click abstain just in this situation, because uh, it does require you to put a vote in, please. It will be noted in the minutes that uh, there was a, a conflict of interest. Absolutely, I will note it. Voting is closed, Madam Mayor. Thank you, and it's carried unanimously for those who could vote. And uh, we will move on now to 9.2.3. Um, and that is the virtual Canada Day celebrations. And um, may I have a motion please to uh, receive this report? I'll move that Madam Mayor, Councillor Watton. Thank you. Uh, that is the virtual candidate today, yes. Uh, so we've received for information. Could I have a seconder, please? Councillor Guido. Councillor Guido, thank you very much. 
Uh, Councillor Guido, uh, no, sorry. Yes, it was you, Councillor yes. Guido. Uh, you pulled that and your yes. question. Thank you, Madam Mayor. So on um, section three, financial implications, um, the uh, suggestion is, is that we'll be using the Canada, uh, Celebrate Canada grant um, and that there'll be no cost to the municipality to uh, participate in this. If we're unsuccessful with the grant for whatever reason, uh, is the suggestion then that we will not participate or will we be uh, pain um, from the township directly for this then. Thank you. Um, Ms. Michelle, are you uh, available here to answer that question? I am, thank you, Madam Mayor. Through you to Councillor Guido. Um, so if we're unsuccessful, we're still being able to participate. Um, it was decided through all of the Durham Region municipalities that if um, somebody doesn't have budget, will still be able to participate and we, um, some of the other municipalities will help with that financially. I would, I would imagine, um, Ms. Michelle, that um, we may not be able to have that um, video. Is, uh, would that be fair to say that uh, there would just be, um, it would just be able to participate as far as having access to, uh, to the whole event. Is that correct? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Yeah, um, the video, actually, if the one you're talking about is through the Durham Tourism, um, they will be paying for that first video. The main event video, that one will still be able to have content in there and still be able to participate. It just means that our extra content on our own tourism site may be a little less than some of the other ones if we don't get the grant. Yeah, that's the, that's the one I meant, I think. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Guido, anything further? Thank you. Yes, one one further question for Ms. Michelle. Um, it, it looks like an interesting lineup as far as um, a group of individuals that will be participating. Local celebrity messages. Who's determining, we all think we're local celebrities, who's determining who a local celebrity is and how many will each municipality be um, choosing? I think you're on the list, Councillor Guido. Oh, yeah, no, I don't want to be on the list. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Uh, Michelle? Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Through you to Councillor Guido. Um, we've all put forward a list of um, local people, people from the town. They might not live here right now, but from um, each of our different respective municipalities um, and going through. Basically, it's going to be who we can get in touch with, depending on who those local personalities are. Um, a lot of our local ones are here and easily um, reached out to, but some of the ones in the other municipalities, again, it just depends on who we can get um, it from. We're hoping that if we can get contact with them and reach out, that we can include as many as possible. Ms. Michelle, you. You, have you developed that list or do you need um, input from anybody who can make a suggestion? Uh, we, we are more than happy. Sorry, thank you, Madam, Madam Mayor. We are more than happy to take suggestions, yes. Um, we're currently having, I think, two meetings this week. Um, we do have some on the list from our area, but if anybody has suggestions, I'm more than willing to take them. Okay, there you go. Thank you, uh, councillors. If you uh, can think of somebody um, that uh, would be uh, um, great to have on this uh, video, uh, please let Megan know. Okay, thank you. Anything else, uh, Councillor Guido? No, thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you very much. Any other questions or comments? on this sounds like a really exciting event um you know if we can't have canada day the way we we have done for about the past 15 years um this is this is uh, really quite exciting so thank you very much for developing that report uh, miss michelle uh so we'll uh, mr clerk can you open the voting please to receive this for information voting is open madam mayor thank you Looking for Councillor McDougall. Thank you. Closing the vote now, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Vote is now closed. And that is carried six to zero. Thank you very much. And uh, now we'll move on to 9.2.4. And Councillor McDougall, uh, you have pulled that. Do you wish to make the motion? It's the review of the operating expenditures and revenues as at April 30th, and it's on page 77. Yes, I will make that motion, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Could I have a seconder, please? 
Councillor Ross, second. Thank you, Councillor Ross. Uh, Councillor McDougall, you had a question or a comment? Yes, thank you very much. Um, thank you for the report on the uh, financial implications uh, uh, as to what we're going on, what we're going through right now. My question is on, on page 85. Um, it talks with regards to the financial implications and uh, recreational revenue. I was just reading and it says uh, the closing of the recreational facilities from March 13th to July 3rd will result in a loss of about $235,000 and uh, that will be offset by 237000 So it's basically having the recreational facilities closed for that period of time will actually be a net loss for the, or sorry, a net wash for the municipality. Is that correct? Uh, through to Director Valentine, I believe. Thank you. Yes, through you, Madam Mayor. Um, that is correct, actually. It uh, has to do with the a lot of the seasonal and, and students that we bring in to run those programs. So we have... Um, deferred or eliminated them until uh, for that period of time. And as a result of that, yeah, it is a, it, it is a wash. Okay, thank you. Further, uh, Councillor McDougall? Michelle is now exiting. Uh, no. Councillor McDougall, is there anything else uh, no, you would like no, to ask? That's, no, that's all. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments? I had a question, Madam Mayor. Go ahead. Oh, thank you. I was just um, wondering, if, I'm, I'm not sure what page it is uh, to Director Valentin, but I was just wondering, we laid off our crossing guards uh, because of the pandemic, but our budget is 70, and, and I may not be on the right report, so tell me if that's the case, but our budget is 70% used up currently this year compared to 65% last year, and I'm just wondering uh, why we've used up more of our budget if, if they were laid off during this time. Director? And through you, Madam Mayor, <clears throat> this is at a point in time at up to April 30th. Um, I believe we had an additional crossing guard that we were paying for that what would, wasn't budgeted for. So that's why, although there's less um, time as far as March goes, I think the crossing guard that was at Simcoe and Reach was not actually budgeted, a budgeted position that would have had. Uh, that's right. Paid. I remember that. Okay, um, and uh, another question, litter pickup has a, a repairs and maintenance component. Can you clarify that, what, what that is? Director. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I believe the, uh, it's, um, it's to buy supplies. So I think that's what, where they were buying various um, supplies and actually it has to do with um, when staff are along the road and such and they see garbage and they take it to the dump, that's where the, um, the costs are being charged to. Anything further? Okay, um, thank you. Uh, I was just wondering, our utility budget for the museum is quite a bit higher this year. And I, I'm just wondering, I, my question again was related to the pandemic and things being closed, but I was just wondering if you could provide clarity on that. Director? Just having a look here. Um, it could be because we had we had some issues with uh, vandalism and such that we had to in, in install security systems and upgrade the security system. So I believe that might be um, part of the reason oh, for okay. that. So security falls under the utility uh, line item? Just having a quick look. Okay. I think everything seems to be on par for there. Um, you know, even if the facility is closed, we are still having to pay utility charges because the buildings are still, we still, we still have to maintain them. So it could be a timing as far as invoicing as well versus last year. Okay. Okay. Uh, further, if I could, through you, Madam Mayor, um, the contracted services are up more this year for the building department. And I was just wondering um, what, what different contracting we need to do more th that's so much higher this year. Director? I'm just having a look here. Contracted services. 
sorry, under the billing department? Correct, yes. Yeah. Um, just trying to have a quick look here. It could be timing on repairs and maintenance for um, various things. Um, I think some of the chamber, the chamber blinds and things like that, things that were done up in the chamber might have already gone through there. So building maintenance, it varies year over year. So these are just, um, it's not, it's not identical every year. There are different things that happen that need to be done. So that's why it may change. It may vary year over year. If I could, I just have uh, two, two further. Um, one, we're at 95.7% of our sidewalk repairs and maintenance. Does that mean that we're that, that that much of the work is already done for the year? Or is it just that mean that the contracts have gone out and are accounted for, and then that work is going to be done throughout the year? Um, I'm just wondering if uh, Director Coleman can answer that one. Director Coleman? Um, through you, Madam Mayor, to the Councillor, I can definitely answer that. I'm just trying to find out which page it's on here. You have the page. So repairs and maintenance, we have 97% of the budget remaining. We've only oh. spent 1500 to date. Oh, I see. So it's the opposite of how I was looking at it. Okay, that makes more sense. My final comment was just to, to say thank you um, to Director Coleman, um, just to see all of the patching and sweeping and grading and, uh, you know, dust layer and the gravel resurfacing, ditching. I mean, it's been a pandemic. It's been a difficult time for everybody. And there's been so much work that's been done in spite of everything. So I just wanted to say thank you to um, yourself and your team. And uh, thank you, Director Valentin, for this report. And thank you to our clerk for sending us um, reports that were the right side up so we could look at them. <laughs> yes, a uh, little bit of a glitch there. Uh, okay, thank you. Um, I see uh, Councillor McDougall, you forgot to ask one of your questions and you yeah. found it now. So yes, thank go you. Ahead. Very, thank you very, very much, Madam Mayor, for indulging me. I We're all juggling lots of screens and programs right now. Um, question through to Director Valentin. I, it was actually on the, po uh, the top of page 86 uh, on the agenda and it talks about um, staff have identified $1.1 million in operating expenses um, and there's about a, a loss of $189,000 in, in revenues. Um, so overall, we appear to be in good shape moving ahead that we have a, a net decrease in expenditures of $219,000. So I'm just, I'm asking because I know right now a lot of municipalities are looking at next year tending to be, I think, uh, Toronto and larger municipalities. I'm assuming that the shortfalls they're looking at are probably related to things that Scugog doesn't operate, such as transit um, and those sorts of things. Is 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 it to be expected from a taxpayer's perspective next year that we should be in? I know this is difficult to ask. Relatively good shape moving into next year. Director, um, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, through you to Councillor McDougall. Um, at this point in time, I'd like to say yes. Uh, we don't have some of those large expenditures like transit or social services or long-term care facilities that City of Toronto or even the region has, where um, transit, they're not actually taking any fares, but there are a lot of empty buses that are running. So they are running huge deficits on those programs right now. Uh, we're trying to manage uh, our level of service uh, throughout the municipality and what, what we can do. So we are managing that as of April. Um, in my report, as I mentioned, our, our tax payments seem to be on par with prior years. And we will be monitoring um, going forward, you know, daily. We are we are looking at all the revenues and expenditures. So um, in, in an effort to keep us um, balanced and in an effort to, to not have a huge spike next year. And we're still hoping that we're going to be able to do some of those projects that were deferred until September, are we not? That's correct. Yeah, we're, we're managing and monitoring everything and we're moving ahead with some of our projects and we're just looking at our cash flows right now just to ensure that uh, we don't run into any surprises. Yeah, well, thank you. Um, is there anything further, Councillor McDougall? 
No, I, I, I thank you. None of us have a crystal ball and, and, uh, I just thank you for your diligence and, and trying to keep us on the right side of the curve, so to say, thank mm -hmm. you very much. Well, I know that uh, you and your staff director are uh, watching closely for the revenues and and uh, and holding off on expenses so that we can keep um, pretty stable. And uh, and I thank you for for all of that because it's uh, you've been very diligent, you and your staff. So and we're in pretty good shape so far, despite everything that we're going through. So thank you for that. Um, and uh, now we. Uh, did we vote on that? No, we didn't vote on that yet. So, uh, Mr. Clerk, can you open the voting for this? Voting is open, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. I am closing the vote now. Thank you. Everybody's quick. Voting is now closed. And the motion is carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Um, and now um, there are no other items pulled, um, so we will move to the notice of motion, which is um, number 11.1. .1. And uh, Councillor Kiesebrink uh, has made the motion. Councillor Watton, Councillor Kiesebrink, did you have a comment? Or Councillor Watton, either one of you comment on this? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Sorry, I was just trying to get my microphone open. Mm -hmm. um, I can just uh, 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 read them. Do, do you want me to read the motion, Madam Mayor? Sure, for the benefit of the listening audience. Yes, please. Go ahead. Okay. So, whereas all businesses have been severely affected by the restrictions of operations during COVID-19 crisis, and whereas it is anticipated that there will be an announcement about forthcoming opening at a later date, for Eden establishments um, with social distancing consideration in place. Uh, whereas if inside service for Eden established is allowed, the number of tables may be restricted per square foot. And whereas all businesses have been severely affected um, by the restrictions of operations um, during COVID-19 crisis. Um, I think that's a repeat part there. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, Sorry. Whereas these distancing restrictions, go ahead. Yeah. Whereas these distancing restrictions may be in place for a considerable length of time, reducing the revenue and the viability of the business. Uh, and whereas it is a possibility that outside restaurant seasonal patios only will be permitted to open also with physical distancing in place. And whereas this permission may be given well into the 2020 summer season, um, and the final whereas the addition of seasonal patios will help to augment the loss of their inside seating. Um, therefore, be it resolved that the parking spot fee and the road occupancy permit fee for seasonal patios be waived for 2020. Um, if I could, Madam Mayor, just to make a comment. Um, I know that there's been a lot of back and forth about uh, about uh, what you know what people regard as safe. Um, I think the bottom line is is that for some of the business owners, they they want to keep their staff safe. So if they can create a obviously reduced, it it will probably be reduced um, tables out there. But then they can have like a self serve option where the where the customers can come and place their order and come and pick up their items and return their items. So just being outside is really important. We just want to do everything we can to support our downtown. It's been absolutely brutal on everyone. Um, and whatever we can do to help, uh, I, I just think we want to get behind them and support them in that. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Giesebrink. Councillor Watton, did you, as seconder, did you uh, want to add anything? Got your... Thank you, uh, okay. Madam Mayor. And, and just basically, I concur with uh, Councillor Kiesebrink. And, um, you know, I think um, it, it will be well into their season. Um, so um, I think uh, consideration of the waiving of these fees is important. Um, I can say also that I've had several uh, email suggestions that, um, and I know we're not talking about closing the street, but I know places like Toronto have closed the street so that people can walk and and cycle and keep their distances and 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 so on and so forth. And I mean, it's a catch twenty two. On one hand, it will um, prevent 
or it could prevent, um, you know, crowding and assist with um, limited um, seating. Uh, but it could it could also go the other way, as Councillor Guido alluded to earlier. Um, you know, with the um, the waitresses and then the people sitting and then people having to get around on the sidewalks. Will we? Will we? we I guess will staff look at needing to put in another have another parking spot so people can get further around. So I think it's just a, um, something that will allow us to to review it and make it more palatable for for the owners who would like to consider it. So thank, thank you, you Madam. Uh, I see Councillor Brown, you wish to um, declare an interest in this. Yes, my stepson works for Marwan and Marwan has a patio. Yeah, he has a, I think he has an application in, so yeah, I, I'm sure. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Uh, that okay. will be noted. Uh, Councillor Guido, you have a question? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, through you two, I'm going to suggest maybe it's Director Heritage. I can't remember which director's in charge of this, but can can someone remind me what the cost of the permit is? Is it $400? Director Heritage. I, I can answer that, Madam Mayor. Okay, Mr. CAO, go ahead. I'm just not sure. It's not really under Director Heritage's area. I think it's Ms. Ms. Oh, Coleman. pardon yes. me. But <laughs> um, I'll let you answer that, Carol. I know you know the number off the top of your head. Thank you. Okay, Director Coleman. Yes, um, the, the permit fee for seasonal patios is $250 for the road occupancy permit and $400 per parking space per season. So the patios to date have each occupied two parking spaces. So the total cost per year is $1,050 per patio. How many uh, uh, applications do we have uh, to date? Um, My Madam Mayor, this year we have two applications so far. Oh, okay, okay, thank you. Councillor Guido? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Through you to Director Coleman, was there not a financial um, sharing um, method back to the BIA for a portion of the fees collected? Um, who can answer uh, that? I can. Um, through you, Madam Mayor, to the Councillor, there was some general discussion about that originally, um, but in our report last year, there there was no financial sharing. Okay, first, so it's... Sorry. The first year it was a it was a pilot project and there was no charge. Is that what you're thinking of, Councilor Guido? That no, I, I I and I'm sorry. I think because we've been talking about these patios for eons, I I recall that in order to ensure that the other businesses who couldn't participate uh, because they don't offer that type of service. Um, and they were seeing a reduced amount of parking, that there was going to be financial contribution back to the BIA so that the greater BIA can uh, can uh, receive some type of benefit um, to these patios. But perhaps that didn't make it through to the final, um, uh, um, not the pilot, to the final process. Oh, okay. Um, anyways, um, that I, I'm off on that. Um, my only concern with this is is Councillor Kiza Brink and uh, her second recital or first recital of the motion was that all businesses are suffering. And I think we can all confirm that that every single business in Scugog has suffered during this pandemic. And if we are going to waive the fees for one business um, or several businesses, pardon me, who are participating in this patio, I, I worry about the equitability of all of our other businesses um, eh, who are not receiving any relief. Um, I, they're not having a patio, but I think in, we need to be fair with, with how we're supporting our businesses. And while I appreciate um, these patios, I've been a supporter of them since the inception of it. I'm just concerned that we are, are choosing certain ones to support or waive fees from financially when all of our businesses could use some sort of assistance. Thank you. Uh, are any other questions or comments? Seeing none, um, we're ready to, uh, to vote. Uh, Mr. Clerk, will you open the voting, please? Voting is open, Madam Mayor. Thank you.
I'm going to close the vote now. Thank you. Voting is now closed. Carried four to one. Thank you very much with the one that was uh, declared a conflict. Thank uh, you very no, much. No, Madam Mayor, that is a no. Oh, that's a no. Yes. Oh, I'm so, yeah, four to one. And then there was um, uh, a conflict as well. That's correct, yeah. Yes, okay, thank you. Um, uh, next item is uh, new business. Is there any new business to bring forward? No, okay, thank you. Um, Madam, Madam Mayor, did sorry? we have a, we had correspondence that we passed, I believe. Uh, sorry, what, uh, what item is that then you're looking at? Nine point three. Nine point three. Nine point three point one, Madam Mayor. It wasn't extracted. Oh, okay. Yes, it wasn't extracted. So the the correspondence or the bylaws were not extracted. Did you have something that you wish to talk about with nine point three point one? No, Madam Mayor. I just wanted to make sure we didn't miss it. Thank you. No, we didn't miss it. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, no new. Madam, yes. Madam Mayor, if I may, I apologize. Uh, just to clarify that that uh, correspondence, just to clarify for Councillor Keysbrink, is just being received for information. Uh, Councillor Keysbrink may have wanted to endorse that. I leave that her to uh, clarify. Councillor Keysbrink, did you wish to make a motion to endorse this one? Yes, please, if we could. Okay, we can do that now. So a 9.3.1, it's on page 156. Um, it's a correspondence received from the town of Whitby regarding provincial electric vehicle rebate program. Would you like to speak to this motion? Um, oh, first of all, I need a seconder. Councillor McDougall will second. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Keysbrink, did you wish to speak to this motion? Yes, Madam Mayor, I've received quite a bit of um, co correspondence. I think, um, Madam Mayor, you and myself have been um, called into meetings with respect to the electric vehicles. I think that there are people that have them and would love to see see them be utilized. And I know in our master plan, we've talked about in, incorporating them. So if there was a rebate program that, that there used to be one a while ago, but if they were to bring it back, I think it, it could be really good for the environment. So I think that the correspondence from Whitby is apropos and I'd love to see us endorse it as well. Thank you. Okay, and that would be the uh, rebate program would be from the provincial government. Um, so we have a mover and a seconder. Any questions or comments on this? Seeing none, uh, Mr. Clerk, would you open the voting, please? Madam Mayor, the voting is now open. Thank you. I am now closing the vote. Thank you. Carried Voting six to, thank you, six to zero. Uh, it's unanimous. Uh, moving along, um, confirming bylaw. Could I have a mover, please? Confirm the actions of today's meeting. Councillor McDougall. And seconder. Councillor Brown. Thank you, Councillor Brown. Uh, any questions or comments? All those in favor, Mr. Clerk, could you open the voting, please? Voting is open, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Closing the vote now. Thank you. And that is unanimous. And may I have a motion to adjourn, please? Councillor Guido. Oh, Councillor Guido, <laughs> thank you. And a seconder, please? Councillor McDougall. Councillor Kiesebrink. Uh, Mr. Clerk, will you open the voting, please? Voting is open, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Closing the vote now. Thank you. Oh, nobody wants to stay around. It's carried unanimously that we adjourn the meeting. Thank you, everyone, um, staff and councillors, um, and uh, particularly you, JP, our clerk, um, and I, I think our IT has been here as well, Adam Dubecki. Um, I think it went fairly smoothly. I think it went very smoothly, actually, uh, thanks to all of you. So thank you for your patience and your understanding. And uh, we, it looks like we may, we may have a winner here. So thank you, everyone, and uh, enjoy the rest of your evening.